for 20 years, an almost forgotten airport has echoed to the fury of cars at speed. Sebring was as close as you get to the brother of Le Mans. If you're ever going to get a taste of what it's like to be in an endurance race, this is it. Just a week before, he had broken his foot in the motorcycle race. And I said, you better not do this. He said, no, he said, I can do it. I, I can do it. What about shifting and clutching? It must be pretty difficult. Well, it's uh, a little difficult. I can't use a footrest. We put some sandpaper on the bottom, taped it on so I keep it on the clutch pedal and adjust it. We went for it. It was like a Hollywood script. A surprise to most of the 57,000 who looked on was the McQueen Revson Porsche 908. The two have done a masterful job. What was incredible about that race is suddenly they were winning. With this combination, Sebring could have a storybook finish. Approaching the 11th hour, the Porsche closes the gap on the faltering Ferrari. The McQueen pits were overjoyed, thinking the Ferrari was in trouble. And out of the darkness, one car would emerge the victor. It took Mario Andretti two cars to beat us and only pass us on the last laps of the race. The 12 hours of Sebring was over, and Ferrari had won. McQueen Revson was second. We were mobbed at the end of the race. Steve gets up on the car and gives the peace signal. And it was like Moses parted the waters or God appeared in the sky. Silence. That was my biggest thrill for me because I guess being an actor, people don't really expect you to do as well. And, uh, I was a big man in my house with my kids for a while anyway. That was a major, major happy time in his life. I remember when he came home. Yeah, he was in a good mood for about a month after that. After the Sebring race, he wasn't looked at just like, oh, he's the actor superstar, Steve McQueen. He was admired by the other drivers as a real professional racer. <laughs>